In Istram, the design of axes is very simple but very flexible. There is the plotting by inflection points and the plotting by crossing points, also often called entity plotting. Now we are going to focus on the layout by crossing points. In the corridor module click on the horizontal design tab, there you will find two tabs. One where the general characteristics of the axis are configured, name of the axis, park of origin, project speed and group where it is stored. In the other, called entities, geometry parts are edited, here you indicate graphically or numerically by keyboard where a line or curve should pass through, the radius of circular curves or the curvature of spirals. At first, we only have an empty axis composed of a single alignment without coordinates. We will assign the name my first axis, the origin station will be 135,000. Now in the Entities tab, we have two empty coordinates for point 1 and point 2. We'll click on the box with X1, Y1 and then we'll click on a coordinate on the screen. Then we click on the box with X2, Y2 and then we'll punch another coordinate on the screen. With this we have defined a line that passes through two points, if we additionally fill the box with the radius R with a value, it will trace an arc that passes through two points. If we put a negative sign to the radius, the circular curve will turn to the left. This is an Istram radius convention, positive radius curves turn right, negative radius curves turn left. If we place a zero in the box of radius R, it will turn back into a straight line passing through two points. If we want to add a new straight line to form a vertex, we must click on the Add button, this will add an alignment to the end of the one we already have. The procedure is the same, click on the coordinate box and click on the screen. Now we are going to insert a circular curve in the middle of the two straight alignments we already have, make sure it is positioned on axis 1 and entity 2. Click on the insert button. Let's look at the field that says type, we will notice that it has a value of 0. The alignment types are the ways that ISPOL has to solve the geometries. By clicking on the Types button, a menu opens where we can see the whole gallery of ways to solve an axis. When we choose Fixed 2P plus R the box is filled with a zero, it is an entity fixed by two points and a radius. If we choose Fixed P plus AS, the box is filled with a five, it is an entity fixed by a point, and an azimuth. When we choose Floating, the box is filled with an 8, it is an entity whose curvature floats, resting on the entity in front and behind, it is the most usual to define horizontal curves at an inflection point, this entity does not need coordinates and only a radius is enough. We will use a floating entity or type 8, in front of the radius box, there are two pairs of boxes A, these serve to dimension the spiral or spiral. We will indicate a radius of 30 meters and press the calculate button, note that I just indicated the radius of the curve and there are only two boxes type A, the interface adapts according to the input data. Let's press both A buttons, this makes them switch to L to define the spiral by length. Let's fill the input spiral with a value of 15 meters, and the output spiral with a value of 20 meters. We will repeat the same case to add a straight line at the end, a circular curve with a radius of 30 meters, but in this case the spirals will be symmetrical 20 meters. There are a couple of cases that we will look at, they are the spinning and back spinning entities. A rotating entity is one that ends at the point where you click on the screen. A back spinning entity is one that starts at the point where you click on the screen. Having said that, let's make sure we are positioned at axis 1 and entity 5. We will add a spinning type alignment. We will assign a radius of 120 meters and click on the screen a coordinate for point 2. Graphically move that point and observe the results in real time. Now the other case, let's make sure we are positioned in axis 1 and entity 1. We will insert an entity type spinning. 
We will assign a radius of minus 120 meters and click on the screen a coordinate for point 1. Move graphically that point and observe the results in real time. Now to the spinning entities we will add a 25 meter incoming spiral while to the reverse we will add another 25 meter outgoing spiral. Inverse curves are an arrangement where a pair of curves turn in the opposite direction, they can have spirals between them. The final part of our axis ends in a right curve, so let's generate an inverse curve. Let's add a floating entity of radius minus 120 that rests on the previous rotary and then add a straight line at the end. Since we have both inverse curves, we can also charge each one with its own spirals. Well, we will add symmetrical spirals of 25 meters to both curves. Note that in the middle of the two curves there are two inverse spirals, value very well this layout, because this geometry is very complicated to solve in other software but not in Istram, this type of curves whose curvature dances smoothly is the most recommended in the world. This type of complex geometries are present in the design of junctions, therefore, keep this tip for the future. Finally, we have to explain how to draw a curve with a deflection equal to or greater than 180 degrees sexagesimal. Click on Add Entity, use Type 0 by default and add a radius of 50 meters, click on the LX1 button until angle appears. When angle appears we will fill with a value of 180. If we add again an entity type 0 and with the button LX1 we indicate a length of 100 meters, a straight line of 100 meters will be extended. If we now give this line a radius of 500 meters, it will become a curve. Another way to draw a pair curve is to define a float and a straight line. Add a float with a radius of 50 meters, then add a straight line that goes in the opposite direction or converges all the way back.